Warrior Beasts. Warrior. Do I have this one at home? Yeah. I think I do. <laughs> That's why I'm, ask I'm asking you. Today, I am in Nashville, Tennessee at ICCC, the Imperial Commissary Collectors Convention. It's kind of a last minute decision to come here, but it wasn't a terribly far drive, and the whole family is here with me today. I had some friends coming out to this show, so I figured, why not check it out, do a little bit of toy hunting. A lot of people turned out for the show. There was a pretty big line outside. There was a little cosplayer parade to kind of kick off the convention. It was pretty fun. And uh, in case you didn't catch it with the name of the show, this is a sci-fi centered collector's convention with a very heavy Star Wars influence. I actually overlooked that. I've been seeing ICCC all over social media for the last couple years. I actually had no idea this was a Star Wars show until I got here. But you know what? That's cool. I like Star Wars. And you know what? These shows usually have other things mixed in aside from just the one property that they're kind of celebrating. So I'm sure we're going to still find some cool stuff today. You give him a fist bump? Here. <laughs> He's still learning. Ah, so as soon as I walk in, I see the banner for my buddy Tony's booth over at Nowhere Collectibles. So he sets up at a lot of these shows that I've been going to. So that seems like a really good place to start. It's like right at the one end of the convention center. So I'm going to start by heading right over to his booth and checking things out. And like always, he has got quite an impressive selection here. Definitely a lot more than Star Wars in this particular booth. Oh man, you guys know how I've sort of been on this G.I. Joe side quest lately? <laughs> well, check out these Takara carded vintage G.I. Joe figures. These are amazing and way out of my price range. Not the type of thing I really need to be collecting since it's certainly not my main focus. But I always love seeing international releases of some of our favorite vintage figures. These are really cool. All right, it's time to venture out to the rest of the show floor, see what else we can find. Oh, well that didn't take long. I found the Motu. One's with the mini comics up front. Oh, that's nice. He's from Hanging. Rock on. Oh. Another rock on. Extendar, have you ever seen Extendar? I mean, the one that stretches the out and grows. He's really cool. So this is this is the variant too because he's got the red neck instead of the yellow neck. Oh. Uh, Twenty five is a good price on that. It's awesome. Yeah. So there's honestly some pretty good Motu figures here, and the prices aren't bad. But I don't want to start the show by buying a bunch of toys that I already have. I, I feel like I need to get out there and see what else the show has to offer before I do something like that. But good table here. Even some superpowers scattered around. Oh, this is kind of cool. You sell one of these display cases? Yep. Oh, awesome. Mount on the wall, screw holes? Yep. And it just, sli just slides out? out. Oh, I like this. You can see the back of the With the mirror? Yeah. That's really cool. Do you need it here? I'll put it back here if you don't want to carry it. Uh, would you mind? No. That would be oh, wonderful, yeah. actually. Yeah. That is a big Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'll swing back by later. Thank you. There's a bunch of ninja turds in there. Ninja turds. Ninja turds? I said, I said turds. Turtles. Thank you. 
same thing. Turds, turds. What's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. Ah, now I'm over at my buddy Seth's booth, another awesome dealer that I run into at many of these shows, and he always has an incredible variety as well. Hey, look, more Motu! Cool! So the yellow armor... Oh, it's on there. Oh, sorry, man. Hey, Pixel Dan. Hey, how's it going? Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too, man. <laughs> uh, so the yellow armor came with a weapons pack. They had like an accessory set where it was just a bunch of weapons. And the yellow armor was in there, so you can swap if you wanted. So that's why he's got the red armor's in there too. I like the red armor better. Yeah, yeah, I like the red armor and better this too. One has no red armor. He looks kind of weird with the yellow, doesn't he? I know. Yeah. Okay, hunting with Spencer has become an absolute blast. This kid just—he just cracks me up. <laughs> Street Fighter GI Joe. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And I think I have both of these actually carted already at home. But I love them. I love so them so much. On. That's pretty good. It's, pretty, it's, it's Hadouken. Oh, I thought it was Shalukin. Hadouken. What did you say? I said, I said Shalukin. Shalukin. Okay, I that's that. good enough. <laughs> what about these, even though it's in a box? This. Yeah, these are like newer ones. Ooh, he's 125. So that's not for uh, you to play with. <laughs> he's cool. He's called a bat. <laughs> not that kind. Of, well, should you make like a crow noise? I, I don't like, know why I <laughs> like a rooster. <laughs> I have like every version of the Rancor at home except for this one. Because I love the Rancor. It's like one of my favorite Star Wars creatures. Also, he loves the Rancor. And it's funny because I look at this and this is clearly like one of the not good Rancors. But part of me still wants it just because I don't have that one. Collecting is weird. I have Rancor in my Star Wars Lego game. And I got it. 75. And uh, I got him. Uh, I just don't know. I probably don't need it. Okay, like I said, there is a lot of Star Wars stuff at this show. And here I am being the guy that's looking at the Power of the Force 2 stuff from the 90s. Go figure, right? Here's those Star Wars micro packs again. Every time I see these, I feel like I get a little closer to buying them. This Bantha one is really cool, but it's that Jabba the Hutt one. Man, every time I see it, it's only a matter of time, I think, but not today. Oh, wow, Force Unleashed. I was actually really into these when they first came out. These were released by Hasbro and they are essentially statues featuring many characters from the Star Wars universe in these very heavy action poses. And a lot of them are pretty cool and honestly I think the sculpts still hold up today. So another thing about this show is that there is a lot of really cool cosplay and props and stuff like that here. It actually takes up half of the show floor. And there's a lot of really cool things to see. Like for example, there was a big group with their astromech droids. And my kids absolutely loved these droids and I can't blame them. They were pretty dang cool. <laughs> Whoa. You okay, you You speak droid? I don't speak droid. I don't know what he said. It's awesome. I love R5. He, he, he actually just talked. Did he? He said, hello, R5. Okay. But for me, it was all about this full-sized, real Ninja Turtles party wagon. Holy cow, how cool is that? For only $10, you can walk up, you can take as many photos with it as you want, you can shoot video, you can get inside of it, you can just check it out. What a cool thing to bring to a convention. 
and the kids loved this as well. Uh, we actually spent a lot of time hanging out with the turtle van. This was awesome. It's pizza! Wait, wait, it says Splinter gets first bite. Oh, <laughs> uh, you don't get a bite. Spencer, we're in the turtle van. We gotta go save New York. We gotta stop the shredder. Yeah, but who's driving? Who is driving? Oh no! What do you think, Mikey? Cowbunga says it all? <laughs> Cowbunga says it all. All right, all of that was really cool and I'm really glad I spent some time, especially with the family, to check all of that out. But now we gotta get back to toy hunting, so let's get back to the show floor. Oh, hey, G.I. Joe figures. Guess I better start digging through these. There's some pretty cool looking figures in here, but you know which one really grabbed my attention today? This weirdo, Globulus. Man, what a weird looking figure for this line. He's one that I've definitely had in my mind since I've started this G.I. Joe hunt. I think I'm probably gonna grab this one today. All right, so I keep talking about all that Star Wars at the show, but I haven't focused on a lot of it. So let's check out all of this amazing vintage Kenner Star Wars stuff. Now, I've told you guys in the past that this is another line that I'm sort of dabbling in a little bit here and there, grabbing some pieces. I've never been a full on collector of the vintage Star Wars line, but I super appreciate it. And looking at all of these amazing carded figures here, all of these boxes for the vehicles and the play sets, to be honest, it's a little overwhelming, but it is so incredibly cool to see. Oh, the mini rigs are actually something I've been really tempted by. The more I see them, especially with the boxes and that amazing photography, the more I like them. Oh man, an in-box complete creature cantina. This is one of the main things I've been wanting to pick up from the vintage Kenner Star Wars line. Now it's got a $200 price tag on it. And to be honest, I'm having hesitations. And if I'm having hesitations, I've come to learn from myself that that probably means I shouldn't spend the money today. $200 doesn't even seem like a terrible price for it. I just don't know if I wanna drop that much on one item right at this moment. So even though this seems like the right way to get exactly what I want with the box and everything, I'm gonna pass on it and I hope that this is still gonna come up at some point in the future. Oh, oh wait, this same booth has something that's really speaking to me and it's not Star Wars at all. It's a vintage Masters of the Universe Power Sword roleplay set. It comes with two swords. It's still on the card that it came in, and I've never even seen this one like this. I don't own these particular roleplay swords, but ouch, $450? Yeah, there's, there's no way I can drop that on this. But I love it. Oh, wow, so cool. Well, I need this for my toy room, right? That's a, you see this, Spence? It's a Skeletor light switch cover. Why, why is it always Skeletor? Why is it always Skeletor? It's always Skeletor, son. Oh. I like the slime splat. Look at the slime splat one. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, that one's cool, because that one you would actually flip this to turn off and on your light. How do you take it out? Shh. That's how you would turn your light on and off. How cool is that? Daddy, I love it because... Space balls, the light switch. Okay, so I'm walking around again, and I just saw that $450 Motu power sword thing, and I passed on that. But then for some reason I stumbled upon this and started to actually consider it. Yeah. So this dealer has just a big lot of loose vintage Masters of the Universe figures, vehicles, and a Castle Grayskull playset, and he just wants to get rid of all of it 
for $500. Now, there's nothing here that I really need. I've got all this stuff, but here I am studying it just to see if I feel like it's worth picking up. I'm just doing, I'm doing research. Yeah, it's not quite what I was hoping. But I was trying to verify if this was like one of the earliest releases of Castle Grayskull. Um, the paint mask on the front of the early ones are a little bit better. They're a little bit more specific. Like they actually used a paint mask on the front of the castle. And they abandoned that at some point and then just started doing like a black overspray. Which is why every Castle Grayskull looks different. It has various amounts of black paint sprayed on the front. But the various earliest examples are like very deliberately just inside the eyes and just inside the nose. So that was kind of like, that's like the big giveaway for like the earliest releases. So I tried to look at that, but that looks pretty like oversprayed compared to like the earliest examples have it just pretty deliberately inside the eyes and the nose. Um, do I really need to do this? But I don't know if I want to spend 500 for all of this because I don't really need all of this. <laughs> because he's also got like all of this and this is all, like he's got kind of, he's got the flags, he's got all of the cardboard and that's all pretty good stuff. And then Night Stalker is here which is the harder to get of the two. But like this is incomplete, this is incomplete, this is missing the bottom. The Battle Cat's nice. It's the common version of four deck. It's common Stratos. And Broken Leech. See, I just, oh, I don't know. No paint on the back of Tongue Lasher. So most of this stuff is just common. There's really nothing like super standout. But the castle's nice, and the castle's got a lot of, a lot of good parts. This is the brown-haired version. Sometimes she's got red hair, sometimes she has brown hair. Her hair always matches her boots, so whatever color they decided to use. Either brown or red. So that's nice. That's a nice Tila. Clawful. That's cool. Do you have a clawful? <laughs> you gave all your He-Man toys to me. I don't think that's how that went, right? I gave you a bunch of He-Man toys. You gave them back to me? Oh, he's not a He-Man guy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to think on it. I don't know. So yeah, I passed on it and that was the right call. <laughs> I definitely did not need to drop $500 on this, but man, I got to be honest, like there's some decent stuff in there. Like He-Man and Battle Cat alone pick, is, goes for a lot of money together these days. And Castle Grayskull, I mean, that Castle Grayskull was in great shape. It had all the cardboard pieces. It was looking really nice. And it's stuff like that that just, I don't know, man, even though I have all these in my collection already, I love them so much that I always feel the need to buy them when they're good deals. Maybe collecting is a sickness. <laughs> uh, this is kind of amazing. It's yeah. co it's Cobot. It's a Coca-Cola astromech droid. Oh my. That's amazing. That's actually really cool. Dude. It is really cool. Oh. I, love, I love these images of like the NASA astronauts on the moon and they just... <laughs> put the coke robot there beep beep okay so the show is getting ready to come to a close i've got a few more booths that i want to check out but i gotta say that like even though there was a lot of star wars here um as you'll notice i didn't focus on showing a lot of it because there was also a lot of other vintage stuff around here stuff that was catching my attention i was actually kind of impressed with how much vintage there was at this show like for example this booth right here look at all of these boxed kenner mega force toys 
holy cow, I think this is the most of these I've ever seen in one place. Now, the reality is I actually have a bunch of these now because I've been picking these up one at a time from various toy stores and toy shows, but just seeing these all here and seeing them all sealed, wow, that rush of nostalgia, I loved it. Oh man, okay, so, and this dealer also has a whole bunch of carded Kenner Aliens toys. And this is another line that like, I love these. I have a bunch of these at home. I have a bunch of them loose, but I have been trying to hunt down carded examples of all these figures for a project I have in mind. And these prices aren't bad. I wonder if I can get a bundle deal if I buy all of his Kenner Aliens. Hmm, did I do it? All right, so the actual show itself has ended, but this is one of those conventions that does room trading in the evenings. If you've never been to a convention that does this, it's actually pretty cool, where the community kind of comes together at the hotel and a lot of the dealers or even just people attending the show will do room sales, sales right out of their hotel rooms. There's usually a board in the lobby that tells you what rooms have what, and everybody from the show is just wandering the hallways, going into the rooms. It's a lot of fun. It's a really cool like toy community experience. And I love it when shows have this. So I decided I needed to hit these uh, room sales before I ended my day. And again, I'm seeing a lot of cool stuff. There is a lot of Star Wars, a lot of really cool vintage Star Wars though that I'm having a lot more fun looking at here in these particular room sales. Okay, now this is one of those things though that really goes over my head. It's, it's a little overwhelming because I don't know vintage Star Wars that well. Look at all these variants for this Jedi Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, but these play sets, oh, these play sets are all incomplete, but they're still tempting because I love play sets. Ah, five to $10 each. Now that is more my speed. And there's some pretty cool figures here. And I actually see some that I don't have and none of these have accessories. They're just the figures themselves, but still for like $5, you can't really beat that price. So I'm gonna grab a couple of these guys here because I did find a few of them that I really like. Oh, this room has a whole bunch of Masters of the Universe parts. Always love digging through bins like this. And a whole bunch of mini comics and posters. This is awesome. And here's a whole bunch more G.I. Joe. And as I'm digging through this, I'm realizing the prices are pretty good. So maybe I'll find some more figures to add to my new collection. Like these guys, whoa, Cobra La. I just bought Galobulus on the show floor. Maybe I should go ahead and complete this trio tonight. Ah, and there's Big Boa. And he doesn't have his punching bag, but he does have his boxing gloves. He's one that I've actually been looking for, so this might be the right moment for him as well. And I think that is a good place to end my hunting for ICCC. Honestly, this was a really fun convention. I had a blast just hanging out with friends, hanging out with my family. Lots of cool vintage toys all around on the show floor and these room sales. The room sales were a lot of fun. So if you ever go to a show that's got the room sales, I would highly recommend checking those out. But if you're ever in the Nashville area around the time of the show, definitely worth checking out. I think you'll have a lot of fun, especially if you're a sci-fi and Star Wars fan. There's a lot of that stuff going on there. And with that being said, my friends, it's time for my haul. So I grabbed this awesome Skeletor light switch cover. There was a lot of really cool homemade stuff at the show and I thought this was really neat. I thought it would look good in my studio and turns out it does, it's awesome. Since the show had a very heavy Star Wars influence, I felt like I needed to grab some vintage Kenners to add to my collection. So from the room sales, I ended up grabbing Reese and 8D8. And of course, we're adding to the Joe collection. I picked up Big Boa. I really love this guy. I also got the entire Cobra Law team with Galobulus, Nemesis Enforcer with his tentacles but missing his wings, and the Royal Guard. I grabbed two of these display cases you saw me pick up early in the video. They have plexiglass covers that are a little scuffed up. I'm gonna see if I can clean them, but either way you can still mount them on the wall and you don't need those covers. Pretty cool, and now I just need to decide what exactly I'm gonna display in those. And I was able to get a bundle deal on all of those Kenner Aliens figures. So I ended up with six carded aliens, one carded predator, and the power loader all still sealed. 
pretty awesome. So there you go, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this toy hunt from ICCC. CCCCCCC. Pretty fun convention. Definitely worth checking out. Hey, thank you guys so much for your continued support on these toy hunt episodes. I'm having a lot of fun doing them. Special shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon. You guys are amazing. If any of you out there want to join up on Patreon, Definitely head on over, check it out. You get early access to episodes of this show, to some of my toy reviews. Uh, there's a Discord server as well. And uh, if you can't do Patreon, that's totally cool. I appreciate all of you, no matter how you are able to support the channel, even if it's just by watching and liking and commenting. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much. Happy hunting, my friends. And until next time.